Hi, I'm Errol, a scientist at Microsoft Cambridge UK, and I'm delighted to talk to you today a little bit about how we use Simple in mixed reality projects, both in research and in products. To set the stage, I'd like to start by showing you a short video to introduce Microsoft Mesh, a new service we have that enables shared presence and shared experiences through mixed reality. Connection is a spark that gives our lives meaning. It drives us to seek out others who feel the same way. Okay, why don't you input the data and we'll take a look together. Hey Mari, what you got for me? To find those who share our views, yet offer different perspectives. Saw this net. Look over here. Challenge us with new ways of seeing. But I think we should deepen our understanding and enrich our lives. Great things happen when we commit to something bigger than ourselves. Let's take a closer look at it. Place this here. Let's see how we go from there, okay? This sense of collaboration and the feelings of connection it brings excites us. Hey, just in time. I'm going to move it slightly, okay? It's yours, take it. We have two planes right now on the same trajectory. As we put people first, technology fades into the background and feels like anything but. Aisha, what do you think? I think if we head 330, maintaining 2800, we'll be clear for approach. Excellent. This changes the way we see the world, and in turn, changes the world we see. These numbers are looking great, actually. There's promise in the possibilities, and what we see and create next will stretch the imagination. Good morning, Sarah. Morning. Slowly coming towards the thumb. A world without boundaries. Good job. A lot better than yesterday. Yeah. Excellent. Slowly bring the a world down. where technology enhances, not limits, humanity. With people front, center, and in the spotlight. The future is here. And here can be anywhere. Introducing Microsoft Mesh. Wow, what a video. It covered a lot of different ways to share experiences in mixed reality. One of these ways is with avatars, these 3D models of people. Our goal is that these avatars represent the user as faithfully as possible. And for that, we use motion models, which uses simple. Now that video was awesome, but also included quite a bit of smoke and mirrors. So what does the real thing look like? Let's look at what's going on under the hood. On the left, you can see one of my colleagues, Tom. And on the right, you can see his avatar, a simple body which is animated uniquely using the input received from the HoloLens he's wearing. To be very clear here, there are no external cameras used for any sort of tracking. We're only using the head and hand tracking signals from the HoloLens worn by Tom to infer the pose and motion of his upper body and use this to drive an avatar which moves just like him. So here you can see Tom performing some, you know, typical whole lens hand tracking motion. And what you can see now are the actual input signals that go into the system, the head pose and the hand pose in this case. And you can sometimes see the hand poses jump in and out as the hands go in and out of the whole lens's field of view. But still, we're able to recover most of Tom's pose pretty faithfully. So how does this work? Clearly, one problem that we're dealing with is very limited data. As you can see in the video on the left, we receive just head pose, hand pose, and fingertip locations from the HoloLens. The problem of getting a human body pose from just this very sparse signal is incredibly under constrained. So how can we make this tractable? So we did this by taking advantage of simple, which acts as a strong prior for the unconstrained problem we have at hand. So now we can do something quite typical. Recovering Simple's pose by minimizing an energy, including a data term to make Simple's head and hands line up with the signals, 
and a pose prior to encourage Simple's pose to be likely. However, it's not good enough to be able to fit Simple to one person's signals at a time. We want to enable telepresence to let people communicate and collaborate in mixed reality experiences. And for that, we need to be able to run fast. This is so that we can run on quite low spec cloud machines to run as cheaply as possible to make a cloud service viable. No monster GPU machines allowed here. And secondly, this is because we need to be able to support lots of users connecting to a single session at once. Fortunately, we already have plenty in-house experience for doing body model fitting in real time. For example, the Azure Connect skeletal tracker includes an excellent, very efficient mod model fitter that does rather similar stuff. So we adapted it for simple and introduced a number of optimizations in order to build a service which runs efficiently and reliably in the cloud. So let's take a look at the result. Here is what motion models looks like. Here you can see two people who are hundreds of kilometers apart and still interacting like they were in the same room. Each one is just using a whole lens, no additional cameras. Their head and hand poses are being streamed to a cloud service, which is fitting simple to both of them in real time. The upper video shows what the purple user sees through their whole lens. They can engage with the blue user, see their movement, hear their voice, and even, you know, receive these virtual markets for them. And here's another example of a couple of people collaborating on a shared virtual object. And in this case, I think it's a training session, you know, how explaining how to use some sort of equipment. And when you try this sort of thing out, you can really see how these types of interaction makes virtual meetings, which we all got so used to last year, a totally different experience. So that's how we use Simple in Microsoft Mesh. But before we go into the next part of this talk, I'd like us to rewind a bit. The avatars we just saw there were being driven using hand tracking. But where do these hand tracking poses come from? Here's a debugger view of a hand tracking algorithm running on HoloLens 2. And you may be surprised to find out that HoloLens 2 hand tracking was trained using synthetic data, training images made using computer graphics. You can see what that looks like up here. And we had an awesome synthetic pipeline for this. But the problem was for us that our synthetic hand models ended at the forearm. So while our hand model looked very realistic close up and gave us great ground truth for machine learning, we couldn't make realistic full frame images. And that's why we still had to use a lot of real data with much simpler labels, bear in mind, for training this network, which we called the hand detector. For us, this was frustrating. So we had this amazing synthetic pipeline for the hand only that gave us you know, great machine learning results, but no ability to make good synthetic data for this hand detector that ran on the full frame. And so we asked ourselves, what do we need to do to get to a place where we can have 100% synthetic training data? We're in the simple tutorial, so I think you may have already guessed the answer. So we licensed Simple and began our journey of using Simple for synthetic data. And why use Simple for synthetics? So, you know, I believe parametric models are a great foundation for making synthetic data, and Simple is the best in class parametric body model around. Large pose databases like Amass exist, and we can sample from these. And it has a traditional formulation, which makes it quite amenable for graphics tooling. And this means that we'll be able to find a way to turn these you new know, quite plasticky looking simples into something much more realistic, realistic enough to be used as training data. So collections like Amass are amazing and provide you know, great pose diversity, which is super good for learning things like generic pose priors. But sometimes for synthetics, you want some very special poses, which you cannot find in existing data sets. For example, no one has yet captured a great set of poses that correspond to typical hand tracking style interaction for mixed reality devices. Fortunately, we have our own motion capture studio where we can suit up and capture special poses as required. And that's what you can see here in the middle. So this starts off as just optical marker data. So we have to run Mosh on the mocap data to turn these markers into simple poses. And that's what you can see on the right. So the white dots are the optical markers. Uh, the blue dots are the simulated ones, and the blue mesh is the, the final simple result. And so we do this with our PyTorch implementation of Mosh that fits shape and pose to the entire sequence simultaneously. So one really cool thing with simple is how its shape space acts as a data multiplier. So, you know, like you saw in the previous slide, we only have one person performing poses on the stage, but we can take that pose sequence 
and switch up the body shape completely and then re-render it. And this is why parametric models are so great for synthetics. They really empower you in making your data as diverse as possible. So now we have some suitable poses. Time to make our simples look realistic. Simple is an awesome model of the geometry of naked people, but we do need to add some skin. And so this is where we start leaning into the visual effects toolbox and pull out all the usual tricks to make a low poly mesh like simple look convincingly realistic. We start with these really nice high quality photogrammetry scans that we license from 3D Scan Store. And we fit symbols to them, baking out textures for albedo, displacement, and bump. Then we subdivide simple to get a lot of really high resolution geometry and apply these materials, and the results can start to look good. You can see the sort of knobbly bits of bone poking out about the wrists, and you know, this guy's six pack. We will want to run machine learning on people who aren't naked, so we need to dress simple. There are many methods out there now for making simple look good clothed, and they generally, generally rely on having some sort of clothing geometry on top of simple. We went with the visual effects approach, using Marvelous Designer, which is this piece of software you see here, to prepare the clothing. Clothes made in this way have really nice UV maps for more material texturing, and can be simulated to get these really realistic draping and wrinkles. But what do we do when simple moves around? We can try to simulate the clothing over a pose sequence, but things get really computationally expensive and rather unstable. So we had to find another way. And here's a way we get inspired by the simple community. At ICCV 2019, we saw text to shape, and it was really impressive how well a simple could be made to look clothed using just displacement. So beforehand, we were rigging each clothing item up as a mesh, and things started to get a bit complicated with many different clothing items, all needing the entire set of simple blend shapes transferred. But with this displacement map approach, things got a lot easier. We could set up clothing as a material only, meaning the only mesh in the scene is simple, and all the clothing detail is applied in the shader. And the good news is that this can look pretty good, as you can see here, with enough high resolution geometry and when we bake the maps right, even tiny details of the buttons are visible for close-ups. And we can use another bump texture still to obtain fabric detail. Here you can see a selection from our digital wardrobe. Once we figured out that this displacement map clothing workflow was viable, we partnered with another team in Redmond who really scaled the whole thing up. The approach is now to author different parts of outfits separately, so tops, bottoms, and shoes all have their own displacement map, and these can be kit bashed or composited together into a single coherent outfit. And these materials are really easy to apply for the simple mesh. We are still building this library up, but I think it's amazing how well different types of clothing can be represented with this technique. So here's an example of what this can look like. So on the left, you can see simple, clothed, having mocap animations being replayed on top of it. And on the right, you can see a simulated egocentric view. So this is a view a bit like what you might see from a head-mounted device. And I think you'll agree this looks pretty realistic. Now, synthetic data is a bit pointless unless we actually do some machine learning. So let's finally render a bunch of synthetic training data out for hand tracking. And in the bottom left, you can see some examples. And well, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. Using simple base synthetics alone, we can train machine learning systems that have no problem generalizing to real data for these challenging tasks. On the top right, you can see hand detection working quite robustly, these colorful blobs of confidence maps being drawn to show the estimated locations of the hands. And in the bottom right, you can see some hand key point estimation that's working pretty well. So just to re-emphasize, these neural networks were trained with simple base synthetic data only. They never saw a single real image. And these are some of the first results that convinced us that simple could be used to fully replace real data in a project like hand tracking. And if you know how hard it is to collect real data, this is a super exciting prospect. Thank you so much for listening. It was really fun to talk to you today about how we use simple in mixed reality. Please do get in touch with us if you're interested in working with us at the forefront of AI for virtual presence. And please check out our sponsor session tomorrow where myself and my colleague Tadas will be talking a little bit more about how we use synthetic data. Thanks very much.